I was born 1985 in Ilfracombe, Devon. So <laughs> I can't actually even do the Devon accent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, we'll dive straight in. Yeah. Okay, so um, do you live in the Trellick Tower? I used to live in the Trellick Tower, but I live at the bottom of Goulburn Road now, so a lot of my friends still live in the Trellick. Can you tell us a bit more of how you started living and why you started living in the Trellick Tower? At the um, I s had a time in between flats and I was staying in the Balfron Tower, which is the sister in East London, but it was really quite horrible. It was my friends. <laughs> the area, I mean, is scary as a woman going home at night. It wasn't very nice. But then I had lived in Notting Hill before that all my time in London. So I was like, oh my God, the Trellick, maybe there's one in there. And then I just found, luckily, it was just found an available flat because then they're very rare that they come up um, to rent even. So, and then I just moved across. Because I've moved Mike, it. Yes, I think just might. May I? Yeah. It might be touching materials. Okay. That's better. Lovely. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Yeah. Ooh, she's back over to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, wh when did you. When and how long did you spend in, in power? Um, I was there for about two and a half years or so and before I had lived in the flat two people had died in the flat which was lovely <laughs> but actually I thought it was quite sweet because they were old and they were a couple and they'd lived in the Trellick since um, it had arrived and so it was quite sweet they both died within a week together do you know, do you know more about this? Um, I don't know that much, I just know that they moved in when the Trellick opened and they stayed here the whole time and I know that they bought the flat as well. So can you tell us a bit more about your time in the tower? Um, yes, the tower is a magical place, I think, because um, the people there are different to a normal tower in London. I think everybody talks to each other and knows a lot about each other. And sometimes people gossip behind people's <laughs> backs, but a lot of the time it's all very friendly. But it has a sort of magical air, and I think with the history of it, it's really amazing. I found a few weird things. A few weird things happened when I lived in the tower. Um, my second week of living there, it was about midnight and my flatmate was out and um, two men knocked on the door and said, it's the police, open the door. But they sounded a bit weird, to be honest. So I looked through the spy hole, and it was like two guys in hoods. And I was like, um, no, sorry, I'm not gonna open the door. And they started trying to kick the door down. And it was really, really scary. I was really, I was like screaming and I found my phone and I called the police and then they ran off. So you might just think, oh, they want to come and burgle the flat. But it was very, very weird because it was like, why did they come to the flat? They came to the reception and said, oh, we're here to see flat 116. It was my flat and they're not supposed to let them up, but they, sp and then they were practicing. I had to watch the CCTV back in the lift and they were practicing what they were going to do. And they called somebody and said, we're here. And I was like, oh my God, does somebody want to kill me? So that was my first weird thing about the trailer. But apart from that, <laughs> it was amazing and it was really safe and it was really fun. And I made lots of friends and there was always like, I, you know, two of my very good friends still live there. And I used to go to people's houses for tea parties and things like that. So it was nice. That was just one little scary thing. <laughs> it sounds like that one scary experience didn't take away from that magical mm. lore of the tower and and could you share more about any other memorable moments that you had in the tower um i made a short documentary when i lived in the tower that was quite fun which was shown at the portobello film festival 
And that was kind of me and my flatmates, and I just started filming us um, every day. And um, my flatmates got very used to the camera being there. And then in the end, so we created these kind of memories, and we used to, you know, follow each other around the tower. Sometimes we'd make little clips around the tower. So that was quite a fun thing to do. And it's great because now I have the memories of that flat. And even, um, you know, my flatmates got, became very comfortable with the camera. So, you know, one broke up with her boyfriend, you know, he dumped her on Valentine's Day. So she's, you know, crying about it and talking. And so you kind of got all these snippets of our lives, memories that I probably wouldn't even think about now. So it's nice to have it on film sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah. And there's a, you know, there's lots of quirky characters in the tower as well. A um, couple of pervs, you know, you've got to have a couple of pervs to make. <laughs> One is the caretaker, no, I should say that. Um, and um, there's kind of interesting characters, sweet old ladies that have been there for ages and you know they love talking and like one had some vintage clothes once and she gave me a few bits because she knows I love vintage and so there's these different characters that you meet and it's amazing because they're all together in the same block. If you, if you don't mind me asking, can you tell us if you, if you pick your favourite character on one of them, tell us a bit more about it? Um, Oh my god, that's really hard. <laughs> or, or most memorable character. Yeah. Um, ooh. I mean, there's loads of really funny ones, but I don't want to say it. Like, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I'd probably say like one that I relate to most would probably be, I don't know what her name is, but it's one of the old ladies that lives there, the one that gave me the vintage things. Um, mainly because she always talks to me in the lift, which you probably heard people do that quite a lot. They talk and it's really funny because <laughs> they, you seem to know things about people's lives. Has Trevor Towers influenced your life in any way? And if so, how? Um, it's definitely influenced my life um, because I still feel a very strong attraction to it. So I still feel very drawn to it. And um, the people, I've never lived in, in London, somewhere where the people are so friendly and will say, oh, um, you know, do you want to come to my flat? Or, or if you talk about something you need, or they will help. And that's a really nice feeling. And I know the tower has sometimes has a bad reputation for like, you know, anywhere where there's uh, people all pulled together in a short and um, small space, I think there will be things like that. But generally, I think people are nice. And when the carnival's on, it's amazing. <laughs> the redevelopment may alter that community spirit that's alive in Trellick at the moment. Because they're trying to, um, what are they trying to do exactly? Do you mean the private flats or do you mean what other things they're trying yes, to do? The private flats that yeah. Are and Where? Out there? Yes. On the football thing? Yes. Oh, that's. Um, I think it's going to be sad in a way because I think that space could be used for better things, arts. They've already built. Portobello Square knocked down all those that's right by where I live. I don't know if you know down there. They're, they're doing the redevelopment down there and it's just like these boring flats which have no style or architecture or anything interesting about them. And obviously they're going to sell them for lots. Um, I suppose the flip side of that coin is they could say, oh well it can be used for things in the community but I think there's too many big bad guys at the top that are don't really care about that. <laughs> so I don't think it's a good thing. <laughs> what do you think about the architectural value of Trevick Tower and Chelton, Chelton in the state as a whole? I think it, um, the estate and Trellick has lots of value because um, I don't think, the thing with the Trellick is there's the story behind it, there's Goldfinger and his story, and I think not just the look of the building, but when people read into it, they love his story too, so I think it's kind of multi-dimensional, and um, I don't know much about the 
Chel is it Chel Chelton in the States. Yeah, I don't know much about that. <laughs> but that's, is that all round here? Or it's over there? Ah, oh, okay. Um, I don't know much about the estate, but I know for Trellick, I think they'll never get rid of it. They'll, they might, people might buy out the flats, but it'll always have that kind of magic essence of where it came from. At the time, you know, he was not, it was told as very sort of, you know, a lot of people called it terror towers, didn't they? And they, they thought it was very bad, but I think now it's become something else. some of those characters um, and you talked about meeting people in the lift mm -hmm. was that the only way you met them or were there other ways that you met people in the town uh, mainly I just met people in the lift to chat to and along the corridor but some people along the corridor you would you know it's like any people at work you click more with certain characters or whatever so some people you'd meet in the lift and then yeah become friends with them <laughs> What floor were you on? I was on the 15th floor. And how long would the lift take to get from zero to 15? Um, depends if it was working or not correctly. <laughs> Normally just, I don't know, 30 seconds or something, not, not very bad. But when I was there, they were changing the lifts. So for a while, there was only one, I think, lift, or was it two lifts working, and then they were changing them. Because they were so old, the parts were... Um, Italian or something so they couldn't get them anymore because they didn't make them they had to import them from Italy so they're like we just need new lifts I don't know why they had Italian lifts but they did <laughs> so to labor point, I'm, try, I'm trying to imagine these conversations that last 30 seconds but lead you to someone's room or them to you it depends if the lift stops as well because then then you talk for ages for a few minutes sometimes if it stops at every stop then it's different. And also sometimes when you get to the bottom, you carry on talking as you go outside, and things like that. But there, there wasn't any social structure as such that you were involved with then in uh, any, any room that you would go to, a uh, social room that you would go to? to mm, no, just go to people's flats.